So today I'm going to be reviewing Aiton Bob Captain Teeb. This one is a very interesting fragrance, both in its presentation, the story behind it, and the note breakdown and the scent itself. Really excited to have this one in the collection. I've been enjoying testing it over the past few weeks that I've had this one. And I'm going to give you my full review. I'm going to tell you how it smells, how it performs, when you can wear it, and ultimately if I think this one is worth picking up. And I did get this bottle from The Scent Room. They were kind enough to send this out to me for review. And if you want to grab an Aiton Bob fragrance for yourself, whether it be this one or any others from the line, check them out. They will be linked down below. Again, big thank you to them for sending this out for me to review it and share my thoughts with you guys. And if you have interest in any fragrances at all, make sure you check them out. They will be linked down below. So let's go ahead and talk about how this fragrance smells. When you first spray this one on, right away up top, you get this nice, crisp, refreshing violet leaf. Along with that violet leaf comes a nice green mint note. It's very bright, it pops off, and it fits really well together with the violet leaf. Now we'll go ahead and read off the note breakdown for you guys. Up top you have violet leaf, birch, and mint. In the mid you have green notes, cinnamon, and moss. In the base you have cedar, incense, and vanilla. So you'll find overall when you first spray this one on, and even as it transitions into the dry down, it is a green fragrance all the way through. You get that violet leaf, you get that mint, you get those green notes that are in here, and you just get that nice oak moss throughout the entirety of the scent. This one is all about green, and if you're not a fan of green scents, then you're probably not gonna like this one. But I do find that this one is a different twist on a green type of fragrance, you know? You get that violet leaf, the mint, and the moss, everything about it that makes it green, but you also get this nice spicy cinnamon, and in the base, in the dry down, you get some of that cedar, that incense, and that vanilla. So it does warm up and sweeten up a little bit, but that's when you hit the dry down. Uh, really, immediately off the first spray, it's green, bright, fresh, and invigorating all the way through. But if you give it some time to dry down, it'll really change on you quite a bit, take you through some different uh, transitions and then you'll get to the dry down which I find to be very interesting however the opening of this one does catch your attention and it is something that makes you go wow you know that's different I like that you know it's just kind of refreshing and different which is always nice especially from a niche fragrance I find the quality of this one to be really good on par with the other eight and Bob fragrances that I've tried and on par with a niche product in general there's nothing about this that is unnatural there's nothing that is synthetic uh, it's very smooth it's got a nice blend. All of the notes work together rather than working against each other to create something that really does kind of tell a story and to create something that is very pleasant, very natural, very easy on the nose. So talking about when you can wear this fragrance, for me, this one is going to be a fantastic springtime scent. So really, I'm getting this review out perfect time for spring here coming up if you want a nice invigorating green minty fresh scent uh, to kick off your warm weather rotation this one would be a really solid option also can wear it into summer as well although in the dry down does get a little bit more depth a little bit sweet so i think it would be best for spring when you still have some of that cooler weather and also in fall so this could be a good transitional season fragrance not when it's too hot not when it's too cold kind of get that in between weather this one is suited perfectly for that but I also do find that this one is versatile enough that it could be a signature scent, one that you could wear in summer or in winter as well if you really liked it and you really wanted it to. It has great versatility, so it's one that you can wear for about anything, and it has that freshness and that sweetness to where it can really work any time of year. But for me, immediately when I first sprayed this one on, I thought of springtime, just that green overhaul that this one has really smells nice and is going to be great in the spring weather. Now talking about compliments on this one, this is going to be a pretty solid compliment getter. Now it's not going to be in the blue fragrance category and Broxen and all that stuff, but it is one that's going to have you smelling clean and pleasant and that's really what you want in a fragrance. You want something that's going to make you smell well put together and this one is going to have that going for you really well. It's not going to be too daring like some niche products are. Even like some from Eight and Bob can be a little bit more on the daring side compared to some other ones. Uh, this one is not that. You know, it's going to have that mass appeal about it to where at the very minimum, someone will smell this on you and say, hey, you smell nice. You know, that smells really good. 
or on the other hand, you'll get some great reactions from this one. But I don't really think too many people are going to dislike this. It's clean, it's fresh, it's minty, uh, it's invigorating. It's hard to dislike, so compliments, it's gonna be a very safe compliment getter. So talking about performance on this one, longevity on my skin is in that six, seven hour range. Not too bad, especially for a scent that is primarily fresh and green like this one with a nice mint top note. Normally it's not gonna last forever, and six to seven hours is respectable. Projection, I find this one to be a bit on the softer side, so uh, it's one where I can tell if you get some heat on it in maybe a hotter spring day or in summer, it's gonna project more. But if you're inside where the temperature is just kind of a neutral temperature, not really hot to make it project, it's gonna be on the softer side. So if you want to really get notice from this one, you'll have to go with a few extra sprays. But for someone who just wants to be, you know, kind of uh, casual, kind of under the radar and just smell pleasant without having to announce it to everyone, this one has really nice projection for that. So it's not too loud, it's not too obnoxious, but it's also not super weak either. There finds a nice balance between the two. And for a scent like this one that has a little bit of that classy feel about it, I think that's perfect. Now, one thing that's interesting about this one is it gets compared to Dior Fahrenheit Le Parfum. The reason why is because Le Parfum has that violet leaf vanilla and this has that violet leaf vanilla. And I do see a comparison 100%. It gets that sweetness get that nice violet up top. There is a similarity, but this one also does kind of go off in its own direction. Just much more green, has a bit more of that spicy kick. Also gets compared a little bit to Loam Libra, and that's another one that I do own. Really, really nice scent. It's a shame they discontinued. Violet leaf heavy scent. Similarity there as well, but again, this one kind of goes off and does its own thing. So I don't know how many of these votes are actually from people who have smelled those fragrances and then is comparing it to this, or how many of those votes are from people who see Violet Leaf in this and then go and look at other Violet Leaf fragrances and compare them automatically, which seems to happen quite often on Fragrantica. So you always had to take these with a grain of salt, but yeah, I do get a comparison between the two. But like I said, this one does kind of go off in its own direction. And this one also gets compared to Blue de Chanel. I don't get that at all. I don't see where that's coming from. I guess if you closed both of your eyes and you know looked at the bottle, maybe the bottle can look somewhat similar to Blue de Chanel. But if you open your eyes and you look Really, the bottles look nothing alike. And also, if you were to, you know, plug your nose and then smell this one, then you would know that it doesn't smell anything like Blue de Chanel. If uh, this smells nothing like Blue de Chanel at all, not really sure where that's coming from either. Yeah, it is what it is. That's for Grantica for you. So I just wanted to clear that up as well. So guys, that's going to do it for me. That's my thoughts on Cap Dantibes by Eight and Bob. Remember, if you want to find this one for yourself, that link will be down below to the scent room for you to check it out. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you tomorrow with another one. Take care.